Hello class, in this video, we're going to be covering 10.2, which is flaws of voting methods. And there are 13 problems in this section. And the beginning is a lot of um, definitions. So for number one, it says, if a candidate receives more than half the first place votes in an election, then that candidate should be declared the winner. This criterion is called the majority criterion. Number two says, if a candidate is favored when compared separately with every other candidate in election, then that candidate should be declared the winner. This criterion is called the head-to-head -head criterion. And then number three, if a candidate wins an election and in re-election, the only changes are changes that favor the candidate, then that candidate should win the re-election. This criterion is called the monotosity criterion. And for number four, if a candidate wins an election and in a recount, the only changes that are one or more of the other candidates are removed from the ballot, then that candidate should still win the election. This criterion is called the irrelevant alternatives criterion. Number five is a voting method that may not satisfy any of the fairness criteria is the border count method. So, and then, so we have our four fairness criterion and one of the ones that might not meet any of those fairness criterion is the border, border criterion which is weird because that one seems like the most consistent to me when you're trying to find rankings of candidates, not just a winner in general, but the rank of the winners, right? It's like when you're voting for officers, that kind of thing. Um, so let's look at number six. We says, voter in a small town are considering four proposals, A, B, C, and D, for the design of affordable housing. The winning design is to be determined by the board account method. The preference table for the election is shown. So according to the board account uh, method, this one gets one point, two points, three points, and four points. So I did the tallies here. Um, for A, we have 210 votes with three points each, 84 votes with three points each, 63 votes with three points each, and then 42 votes with four points each, which gives us this tally here, 1239. Do the same thing for B, C, and D, and we get these tallies here, okay? So part A says, which design has the majority of first place votes? So according to, um, according to that question, according, it says, which design has the majority of first place votes? Well, if you notice here, there is a total of 210 votes. Okay, so he has all 210 of these votes. And so he does win the majority of the first place. Even C, if you tally up C's votes, 84 plus 63, that's only, I believe, 147. But let me make sure. One, clear, 84 plus 63, yes, is 147. That does not trump the 210 votes for D. So D would win as far as the first place votes are concerned, okay? But using the board count method, we see that A has the most votes there. So using the board count method, A should win. Um, so it's basically like, we're well, using the plurality method or are you using the board count method. So two different methods have been chosen here. And if you notice, you get two different winners depending on which method it is that you use. Um, so remember one of those um, criterion for fairness is that the majority is the first place votes belongs to the winner. So it says here, is the majority criterion satisfied? Why or why not? The answer is no. The design with the majority of first place votes lost the election according to the board account method. Okay, so it doesn't meet that fairness criterion. Supposedly, the board board account could possibly not meet any of the criterion um, 
but we know that in this specific case, it failed to meet the majority criterion. There are three other criterions that it has not been um, put up against yet. So number seven says, a reality show is considering three cities for their new season, Paris, Reno, and Dallas. A chosen group of people will vote to decide where the new season will be taped. The winning city is to be determined by the plurality method. The preference table for the evaluation select election sh is shown. So we're doing this. Now, this is not the um, plurality method is the easy one. That's the one where you look to see who has the most first place votes and they're the winner, okay? So according to the plurality uh, thing, P has 72 first place votes, D has, or R has 24, and D has 49 plus 24, which happens to be 73. But 73 is more than 72, so it's actually D that should be win. Dallas should win according to the plurality method. Not should, it is the winner according to the plurality method. But part A says, which city is favored over all others using a head-to-head -head comparison? So if I do, there's only three things here. So if I do, how many do comparisons do I need to make? Three and then three minus one, which is two over two. That's only three comparisons. And just like before, I like to do P with R, P with D, and then the last two together, right? R with D or D with R, same thing. So when we're doing the head to head, we're only looking at P and R. So when is P above R? It's here with 72 votes and it's here with 24 votes. When is R above P? That's here at 49 votes and here at 24 votes. So according to those counts, it's actually P that's going to win that head to head. Then um, for P and D, we're gonna do P is above D with 72 votes. Nope, nope, and P is above D with 24 votes. D is above P with 49 and with 24 votes. So again, when you're doing the head-to-head, -head, P is going to win that scenario. Now when you do D versus R, so they're going head-to-head. -head. D is above R here with 49 points, and D is above R here with 24 points. R is above D here with 72 and here with 24. So between these two, R is actually the one that's going to win. However, P won the head-to-head -head more times than R won the head-to-head. -head. So what that ultimately means is that P is the winner or P should be the winner according to the head-to-head -head comparison. So part C says, is the head-to-head -head criterion satisfied? No, it's not because there are two different winners that, have, that should be winning. According to the method they use to get the winner, the plurality method, the winner is D. But according to the head-to-head -head criterion, the winner should have been P. So no, the city favored over the rest in the head-to-head -head comparison actually lost the election because this is the winner. D is the actual winner. Now, number eight, moving on to number eight, it says, a town is voting on an ordinance dealing with smoking in public spaces. The options are A, permit unrestricted smoking, B, permit smoking in designated areas only, and C, ban all smoking in public places. The winner is to be determined by the board account method. The preference table for the election is shown. Now it says uh, A, what what which option is favored over all others using the head-to-head -head comparison? So you do have three options here. So just like up there when I had three options, I'm gonna have three comparisons. So what I did was is I did the comparisons. I did A with B, A with C, and then B and C together. So A versus B. Um, A has more votes here, and A wins over B with 13 votes there. Now B wins over A with 52, B wins over A with 26 votes, and B wins over A with 13 votes. So according to these numbers, B is going to be the one that wins. Now when comparing A and C together, um, A wins over C with 26 votes, A wins over C with 13 votes, and A wins over C with 13 more votes. C wins over A with 52, 
and C wins over A with 13 more. So if you add up all of these values together, it's actually C that wins that uh, that head to head. Now B versus C. So B uh, beats C with 26, B beats C with 13, and then B beats C again with 13. Whereas um, C beats B with 52 and uh, C beats B with 13 more. But here, if you do the total count, C is actually the winner. So since C has the most head-to-head -head wins, C is the ultimate winner according to the, or C should be the winner according to the head-to-head -head comparison. So which option is favored all others using the head, com head comparison? That would be C. However, the option that wins the vote by doing the board account could be different. And that's the winner. That's the actual winner. This is the method that they use to choose the winner. So this is the actual winner. This is just who should have won according to that specific fairness criteria. But remember, there's four of them, not just one of them. Um, so we did the board account. So for A, 52 votes at one point, 26 votes at two points, 13 votes at three points, 13 votes at one point, and then 13 votes at three points again, which gave us a tally of 195. I did the same thing for B and C, and it turns out that B had the most votes, so B is the actual winner. So part C says, is the head-to-head -head criterion satisfied? Why or why not? No, first of all, so these cannot be it, right? Because these are not the same. So no, it, it is not satisfied. And the option favored over the rest of the head, the rest in head to head comparison lost the election. This is who won the election, okay? And that's not the same person. So they lost the election. Now moving on to number nine. We're making our way, we're making our way. We only have 13, but two of them are pretty lengthy. So, let me let it, um, there it goes. The preference table gives the results of the straw vote among three candidates, A, B, and C. Using the plurality with elimination method, which candidate wins the straw vote? So what I've done is I look and see who had the most first place votes, okay? So that was um, A with 21 and 12, B with just 24, and then C with 30. And I did figure out the total number of votes, which was 87. So I converted this fraction into a decimal and I got this. I converted this fraction into, not a decimal, but a percentage and I got this. I converted this fraction into a percentage and I got this. None of these are 50% or more. So none of them won by the majority vote, okay? But who had the lesser number of votes here for first place. That was B. B had the lesser percentage. So that means we need to eliminate B. So what I've done is I've scribbled out B all over this thing, okay? Now, um, if you need to see it without the little scribbles, I did recreate it down here. So notice that all you'd be left with um, or I tallied it right here. Here we go. So all I would be left with is who wins over what, right? So A would get these two votes, 21 and 12, and C, since it's above A, would get these two votes, 30 and 24. But when I took that ratio over the total 87, I get this uh, percentages, okay? So now C has the more percentage and it has more than 50%, so C wins that majority vote. So according to the plurality with elimination method, C is the winner, okay? Now, part B says, in the actual election, the 12 voters in the last column who voted A, B, C in that order changed their votes to C, A, B. Using the plurality with elimination method, which candidate wins the actual election, okay? So if these people change their vote to CAB, it means all 12 of these people are now included in that count with the CAB, okay? So since all 12 are going to be in this group now, I changed it here to a 42. And notice I have CAB with a 42. 
These other two columns, there were no changes. So those stayed exactly as they were. 24 with BCA and 21 with ABC. So then I did the plurality method, uh, elimination method again. So A's got 21 in first place, B's got 24 in first place, and C's got 42. I found all of their percentages. Every single one of them is less than 50%. So you do have to eliminate the candidate with the least number of votes, and that happens to be A. So I scribbled out A, and then I did the tally again. So this time C has those 42 votes, but B has the 24 and the 21 votes. So when I take those percentages out of 87, um, I get 52 and 48. And then between the two, this one does have the majority vote over 50% of the vote. So that means that B would win according to this, this tally, okay? Um, so then we get B is the winner. Now it's asking, is the monotonicity uh, criterion satisfied? Remember what the monotonicity criterion is. It says that if a candidate wins an election and in a recount, the only changes that are one or more of the other candidates are removed from the ballot, then that candidate should be, oh no, that's not the, yeah. No, that's the irrelevant terms one. Monotonicity, here we go, number three. If a candidate wins an election and in re-election, the only changes are in that favor of the candidate, then that candidate should win the re-election. Now let's examine what happened here. This, according to the first time we did it, C should have been the winner, okay? So C was the winner the first time. Then when they did the recount, these people changed their vote. They did change their vote in favor of this candidate because notice here, Candidate C was in second choice, but when they changed their votes, now C was in, more people voted for C in first place. So that change was in favor of the winner, candidate C. However, when that change occurred and I redid the count, it turned out that B was the new winner with the new recount. So that does violate the monotonicity criterion. So was the monotonicity criterion satisfied? No, it was not. The winner of the straw, the original winner of the straw, lost the actual election through the changes from the recap, okay? So we select this option. Now, number 10 says, the student activity committee members are considering three films directors to speak at a campus art festival. F for Fred, S for Steve, E for Eddie. Their votes are summarized in the following preference table. Complete parts A through C below. So part A says using the pairwise comparison method, who is elected as the speaker? So in the pairwise, we have to compare um, E with F, E with S, and, and F with S. It doesn't matter what order you do these in, even if you put the letters on the other side, because these numbers would be on the other side. Um, but you still determine the same things. So it will still have the same outcome. So when E versus F, E is, uh, beats F um, just here, so with eight votes. But F beats F, E here and here. So that would be six and four, which is 10 votes. So then that means F gets the point here. Now comparing E with S, um, E is more than S here, and that's it. But S is bigger than E or has more uh, higher rank than E with six and four votes. So again, S wins the one point here. Now, if I pin F with S together, um, F beats S just here with six votes, but S beats F with eight and four, which is total of 12 points. So the winner between F and S is going to be S. So S gets that point. Now, if you're looking at all the points here, S is gonna be the ultimate winner because S has the most points. So using the pairwise comparison method, um, the speaker will be S, which is Steve. Now, part B says, prior to the announcement of the winner, Eddie informs the committee that he will not be able to participate due to other commitments. Construct a new preference table for the election with E eliminated. So I scribbled out E and it made a whole new chart. So then now I have in first place F, second place F, first place F, these didn't change. Um, 
Now it says using the new table um, and the pairwise comparison method, who is selected? Well, there's only two candidates to compare. So we're just comparing S and F. And according to this, S has 12 first place votes and F only has six first place votes. So S wins. Um, here it says, is the irrelevant terms criterion satisfied? Um, here it is, because notice that you get the same winner regardless of which way you did it, okay? So yes, the answer is yes. Now, the other part of the answer is the original winner is also won the recount, and that is exactly what happened, versus the original winner won all of the comparisons in both counts. Um, it didn't win all of the comparison in both counts. It won all. It won this comparison, and it won these two comparisons, but it did not win that comparison, okay? Um, well, I guess either one. But this one is the option that they want, okay? Um, I, this one's a little bit tricky because yeah, it didn't win this comparison, but you weren't comparing S here. So it's a little bit tricky to say. It's kind of impossible for them to win all of the comparisons because they're not considered in all of the comparisons. So that one's kind of null and void statement to begin with. Now, number 11, the preference table for an election is given. Use the table to answer the questions below. So here we go there. Using the board account method, who is the winner? So again, this guy gets one point, two point, three points, and four points. So we did all of our ta tallies, right? A has 70 vo votes at one point each, 56 votes at four points each, 35 votes at four points each, and then 14 votes at one point each, and we get this tally. I do the same for B, C, and D. And you can pause the video and verify all of those counts, all of those products and sums, and make sure you get the same total votes as I did, or total counts as I did. Once you have all the total counts, you just pick the person that has the highest number of points. And that happens to be 469, which was option C. So according to the boredom count method, C is the winner. It says, is the majority criterion satisfied? If I look at the majority criterion, notice that you only look at the first place. Um, a would get 56 and 35 votes, which is 91. B would get 70 votes and C would get 14 votes. Um, but if you notice, A wins the majority here, okay? So the answer is no, for sure, because it's not the same winner. So we cannot say it's these two. Um, and here it says, no, the winner of the election received the majority votes. That's not true. The winner of the election did not receive the majority votes. And then this option, which says the candidate who received the majority of first place votes lost the election. That is true because the winner is actually C and not A. Now, number 12. I did need to use the whole sheet of paper here for this one, so I'll try to scroll up when I need to scroll up. But it says the preference table for an election is given. Use the table to answer the questions that appear below it. Using the plurality with elimination method, who is the winner? So if I look at just the first place, A has 120 out of a total of 350, which is about 34%. B has um, 50 and 40, which is 90 total votes out of 350, which is 26%. C has 10% or 10 votes out of 350, which is only about 3%. And then D has 90 and 40, which is 130 votes out of 350, which is about 37%. None of these is over 50%. So none of them wins by the majority. So that means we have to eliminate the one with the lowest, and that is candidate C. So we eliminate C, and I scribble out C, okay? So then I'm gonna unscribble B because B was, I had to do it again. But so not to confuse this as we're reading this, I'm going to unscribble B for the moment. Okay, so just eliminating C, this is what we have here. 
Now we do the tally again. Again, who's first place? The only shift that's going to happen is that D is going to move up to first place here. So the count for A is going to stay the same, 120 out of 350. Um, the count for B is going to be uh, still 90 out of 350. And then the count for D now is going to be 90 plus 40 plus these 10, which is 140 now. And that's only 40% of the vote, though. So still, no one has received the majority of the vote. So we have to eliminate the one with the least amount of votes in this round, and that is B. So we eliminate B. So now C is already gone, and now we're eliminating B. The only two candidates left are D and A. So whoever's at the top in the column, that's who's going to be the first place, and whoever's at the bottom is going to be the second place. So now when I do the tally again, here I have 20 votes, here I have 50, and that's it. So that's 170 votes out of 350, which gives me 49%. For D, we have 90 plus 40, which is 130, plus 40 more, which is 170, plus 10 more, which is 180. So we have 180 over 350 votes. That's about 51%, which is greater than 50%, which is why D will win. Okay, I didn't have to. It wouldn't make sense to eliminate anyone here at this point because there's only one other person to eliminate, so D would be the winner anyway. Um, so we did figure out that D should win according to the plurality with elimination method. D is the winner. Okay. Now it says, is the head-to-head -head criterion satisfied? Why or why not? So I'm going to erase all of this scribbling that we did, and we're going to do the head-to-head -head criterion. Now, how many comparisons are you going to have to do? You can count them. You could use a little formula to count them. But I literally just do A. I do A with B, A with C, A with D. Then B with C and B with D, and then C and D together. Okay, so just make sure that every single one is compared together. Um, once I have all of this laid out, then I start tallying the votes. So when does A override D? It happens at 120 votes. It's way up here, so I can't, it's hard for me. Let me see if I can zoom out. It's gonna look smaller, but maybe it'll help me to get everything in the window. No, I still can't get it all in the window, but... Um, Oh, you know what I can do? I can fold my piece of paper. Well, let's look at this comparison. There we go. And I can zoom back in because I don't have to have so much space. Okay, cool. So that it focus there. Once it focuses, then we'll start talking about this tally. There it goes. So when A beats D is going to be here with 120, here with 50, and that's it, because D is above A in all other situations. So when D is above A, we get 90, we get 40, we get 40, and then we have 10. So between these two counts, this is actually more than this. So D wins that head to head. Then when I have A versus C, Again, A is above C here and here, but C is above A with 90, 40, 40, and 10. So now here, C wins the head-to-head. -head. A versus B, so 120, uh, no, no, and 40. But B uh, triumphs over A at 90, 50, 40, and 10. So B wins that head to head. Now B versus D. So B is above D here with 120. B is above D here with 50. B is above D here with 40 votes. But D is above B here with 90 votes, um, here with 40 votes, and here with 10 votes. So it just so happens that B has the most votes. So B wins that head to head. Now B compared with C. So B over C is 120, B over C is 90, B over C 50, B over C 40. 
um, C over B 40 and C over B with 10. So here B wins that head to head. Now C versus D. So C wins the head to head here with 120 votes. Um, C wins the head to head here with 50. C wins the head to head with 40 votes. And C wins the head to head with 10 votes. D wins the head to head in with 90 votes and with 40 votes. So the majority though here is C. So C wins that head to head. Now who win, who won the most head to heads wins? That would be B. B had three head to head wins, whereas C only had two head to head wins and D only had one head to head win. So that means that B is the ultimate uh, winner here with the head to head criterion. So according to the head to head criterion, um, B should have won. But that's not who won. So was the head to head criterion satisfied? No, it wasn't. So these should already be out. If you don't get the same winner, then it hasn't been satisfied. But for what reason? Here it says the candidate favored over all others in the head to head comparison did not win the election. That's true. The person who should have won in the uh, head to head comparison was D, was B, I'm sorry, but the actual winner was D. Whereas this option says, no, the candidate favored over all others in a head to head comparison won the election. B did not win the election. So that's not true. Finally, we're at the last question. So it says the preference table for an election is given the table to answer the questions below using the board account method, who is the winner? So I took all the tallies, I did the board accounts, and it turned out that C is the winner. Then it says, is the majority criterion uh, satisfied? Remember what the majority criterion is, is who has the majority here. So if I look at the majority, um, B wins the majority vote. So no, the candidate who received the majority first place was B, but they lost the election because C is the winner. Now it says C, is the head-to-head -head criterion satisfied? So again, you can pause the video, zoom in, whatever you gotta do. But I did do the head-to-head -head criterion. Um, and when I did the head-to-head -head criterion, it turned out that B won. So is the head-to-head -head criterion method uh, satisfied? No, because the actual winner is C when this count told me it should have been B. So the person favored in the head-to-head -head comparison, B, lost the election to C. Now, part D says, suppose that candidate A drops out of the race. So I scribbled out all the A's and I made a new chart without the A's and there wouldn't be a fourth choice anymore. Using the board account method among the remaining candidates, who wins the election? So I did the board account again and it turned out that B would have won, okay? So is the R relative alternatives criterion satisfied? No, because when that person that dropped out wasn't the winner to begin with, but they dropped out, it changed all of the vote according to the board account method, okay? So no, the candidate who won the original election lost the election after the recount, right? This person who originally won is no longer the winner in the recount, okay? So the criterion is not satisfied. But that is the end of this video. This is the last section for the semester. So next up would be the review for the final exam. Um, well, first test four, then the review for the final exam, and then the final exam. Um, so I won't be seeing you in the video for the final exam review because that one is provided by the department. But I do wish you all the best of luck.